All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to define a really cool concept called the fractal derivative. So careful, not quite the fractional derivative, which is something else, the fractal derivative. And I found this on Wiki, and the cool thing is there's even an application of that, which I'll present at the end. So, and the reason it's called fractal derivatives is because you used to integer derivatives, first derivative, second derivatives, but fractals in life, they, they're not one dimensional or two dimensional, they're sort of fractional dimensional or they have some dimension, let's say, between zero and one, strictly uh, speaking. And same with the fractal derivative. It's an analog of a fractional derivative where you're taking you know, uh, the derivative order to be, let's say, between zero and one. And it's simply defined as follows. So the definition is really cool and uh, intuitive. The derivative of f with respect to t alpha at t equals to t naught is just the limit as t goes to t naught of f of t minus f of t naught over t minus t naught. So far, just the definition of the derivative. The only change is you put an alpha here. So you're raising sort of uh, your, um, your denominator, each of them, to the power of alpha. And this, if you know how stuff measure, this should also remind you of how stuff measure, where you're measuring your set with balls of uh, radio of size alpha. So um, that's why it makes sense. And alpha here is any positive real number, and this R really doesn't work. Um, and so let me just give you a couple of examples and then just, a, um, uh, just an application of this. So for example, let's see what the, uh, in this case, let's still call it half derivative. Again, not quite the same as half derivative, my other video. Then let's take the derivative of f with respect to square root of t. At t goes to t naught. Well, that's just the limit as t goes to t naught of t minus t naught over square root of t minus square root of t naught. So we're just taking alpha to be uh, one half. And it turns out, at least if t is uh, positive, you can write this as a difference of squares. So this is square root of t minus square root of t naught over square root of t plus square root of t naught over square root of t minus square root of t naught. This disappears, and you're just left with uh, two times square root of t naught plus square root of t naught, which is two square root of t naught. In other words, the derivative of f with respect to square root of t naught is just uh, square root of t. So df over d square root of t is just 2 square root of t. Or I guess, let's write that. dt over d square root of t is just 2 square root of t. And careful, again, not quite the same as fractional derivative because I think for the half derivative, you have some gamma function appearing. All right. That was one thing, and then let's do another easy example. So, not sure how to do it with harder examples, but ah, beautiful. Let's say f of t equals to square root of t. And in particular, notice this function is not differentiable at zero. So this uh, square root derivative, it's good to deal with functions which are not differentiable at a point. Just like for house stuff measure, if you know that, uh, sometimes a set might have like measure zero, but a better house stuff dimension, if you want. So, and in this case, let's do df over d squared of t. That's limit t goes to t naught of square root of t minus square root of t naught over square root of t minus square root of t naught, and that's just one. So just as expected, 
the derivative of square root of t over square root of t is 1. And again, that's nice because even though this function is not differentiable at 0, the square root derivative of this is 1. All right? And um, also, so just as a side comment, uh, turns out you can also do sort of, you've done alpha derivative of B, f at t, and now we can also do sort of beta derivative at t alpha. And that just becomes the same thing. Limit t goes to t naught. I think you just raise f to the beta power. I think that's what this notation means. Again, I didn't come up with this. It's just a Wikipedia thing that I want you to make aware of. Okay, now. Here's the application. So it turns out I'm not just crazy. Wikipedia isn't crazy. This does appear in nature, in particular in the study of partial differential equations. Who knew? So here's an application. So if you know what the heat equation is, it's an equation that models how a solid or some liquid diffuses. Think of like magma that just, you know, it disperses like that, and turns out sometimes you have what's called an anomalous diffusion. So stuff where it doesn't quite go the way you expect it, but it turns out you can still study this. So anomalous diffusion. And turns out they can be studied with those uh, uh, fractal derivatives. So suppose u equals to u of xt is the density of some fluid at position x in time t, assume it's one dimensional, then the um, anomalous diffusion can be written as partial u over partial t alpha as xt equals to partial over partial x beta of partial over partial x beta u of xt, u, let's think, yeah, u at xt. And notice carefully, if alpha and beta are 1, this is just a heat equation. So this is, if you want, a modified heat equation. And let's find the fundamental solution. So the one um, whose behavior at 0 is the Dirac delta distribution. So initially, it's a spike at x, and yeah, not function. I like to call it a function, but people are angry at me. Um, <laughs> now, how do you deal with this? Turns out you can sort of um, turn it into the heat equation just with a little change of variables. So again, just to show you an example where this appears. So let's just t prime equals to t alpha, and x prime equals to x beta. Now, it turns out if you do that, well, t alpha just becomes t prime, and if you use the definition, it indeed becomes the t prime derivative of, um, sorry, yeah, the t prime derivative of uh, uh, u, equals to 2 times the x prime derivative of u. So indeed we get u t prime equal to uh, u x prime x prime, which is the heat equation, the classical heat equation. And uh, initially, I think you still have the Dirac delta distribution, so it does give you the fundamental solution which is simply u x t, so u x prime t prime, equals to 1 over 4 pi t prime e to the minus x prime squared over 4 t prime. And then just if you turn it into alpha and beta, this just becomes, I'm sorry, if you turn it into t and x, it becomes 1 over square root of 4 pi t to the alpha, e to the minus x to the 2 beta over 4t to the alpha. And there you go. It gives you, if you want, the solution to your uh, 
anomalous heat equation. All right, I hope you like this little math fun video. So if you wanna see more math and have more fun, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.